Um, there are pros and cons to buying, there are pros and cons to renting. Um, and it all depends on your situation, it depends on what you want for yourself, it depends on what you can have, right, at the present moment. We glorify home ownership and it's great that we do. It's a huge step and anyone who's able to achieve that, kudos to you. Um, but it's a huge financial commitment. Welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klassen. As you know, the First Time Home Buyer Show comes to your screens every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And of course, we have amazing content coming to you every weeknight this week. We've got Zaman Tungwa Kumalo with the Private Property Podcast, and that's live every Monday to Friday at 7 p.m. And of course, if you're interested in agriculture or farming or even farming stock files, while well, Mbali comes to your screens every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And Chad Viveros comes to your screens every Monday and Friday evening at 8 p.m. as he travels around Johannesburg all the way from Danefern to Stain City looking at amazing houses around Nzanzi. And without further ado, I am ready to start this absolutely amazing show. But before I do that, as this gorgeous lady walked into the room this afternoon. Absolutely gorgeous. I could feel the spirit, your energy, everything. Paul Ngube is with me this evening. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> you're so warm. welcome. Ah, warm. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, you're absolutely, I mean, as you walked in, and I mean, just talking to you over the past few days, you know, also your excitement to share your journey. And we don't get that often, you know, we don't get a lot of uh, people who, who buy first their first time buying homes wanting to share that story because it's not an easy journey no, it's not. emotionally mentally the steps you had to follow to actually purchase that home which we'll get into okay. right but I just want to find out how are you Paul I'm let's good. start there. I'm excited to be here I'm excited to share my story I'm excited to talk to you finally thank you yeah finally, finally. Paul has this always been a goal of yours always always mm. I think from a young age, growing mm. up at home, it's just been the message that's been drilled into my mind. Um, I'm fortunate enough to come from a history of homeowners. Oh, nice. Oh, women. Nice. Uh, my grandmother boasts the title, my mother boasts the mm. title. So when the time came and I was able to do that for myself, I mean, I had to choose between getting a car and getting a property. Yeah. But yeah, it was easy mm. because from uh, a young age, that it was just drilled, was drilled into, into you. Yeah. yeah um, the love of just having something mm. of your own right like, something you can point to and say okay i did that mine, yeah. i work towards that that's mm. mine um, yeah but that option between car and property mm -hmm. a lot of young people are currently sitting in that boat mm. and i know because you have had this kind of you know powerful woman who come before you who automatically will tell you car isn't even an option here what do you even mean but there are people who are sitting in that boat what what would you say how should they make that decision? Yeah, and I love that you mentioned that. Mm. How the older generation would then say, I mean, come on, a car, yeah. it depreciates in value. Exactly. But I think our understanding of value just mm. needs to be more in depth. Mm. I mean, a car could be valuable. Exactly. It, it, yeah, it, 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 it introduces ease, convenience into your life. For me personally, I could do without a car because you know where I was staying and where I was gonna buy the property right. um, and where uh, work is and mm. you know the areas that I frequent, I didn't need to do like a lot of travel. Right. So I could you know handle that with the how train. Mm. So I could do without, mm. but the reality for a lot of young people is that you probably live somewhere else and you work somewhere yeah. else. So when you're faced with that as you know a first uh, major purchase um, option, yeah. then you'll go for the car because it's more valuable for you, mm. you know, in in that moment. And that's the thing I think that a lot of the time we can't come onto this this platform and tell you what you should do. No. We can't tell you buy a home. No. No. I think we need to the hard truth is that you need to look at your own circumstances Always. and then figure it out from there. I know I know that wanting a home and investing in property is definitely something that we should uh, uh, aim towards. Yeah. But looking at your current circumstances and like you said, I mean mm -hmm. you working from home maybe as well is, is convenience. So look at your current uh, uh, circumstances yes. and then make the decision and from it, there. It helps to have all the information at your disposal, mm -hmm. which is why this platform is great. So for someone who evaluates the situation and decides, okay, purchasing a home is great, 
then the information is there exactly. and it makes things easier. You yeah. know, we spoke about earlier about how what an emotional and physically, mentally, everything Lee, uh, the, <laughs> the journey is of buying a property. And that's what I would like to actually, I'd like for you to go talk to us in depth about is emotionally, what was this journey like for you? I mean, you know, I guess because I had a lot of support mm. and because I could go back to mom, I could go back to oh, gran, yeah. ask questions, they were heavily involved in the process. Emotionally, not so much. Okay. I guess the frustration comes in yeah. here and there with, you know, how lengthy you realize the process is mm -hmm. and how much you need to have and mm. the preparation and... There are times where you get like these um, costs that you didn't even anticipate and you're like, wait, guys, why yeah. didn't you warn me about this <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you find yourself in the attorney's office and, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. But um, emotionally, I had a lot of support. Mm. I think where it was the most taxing was financially. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Mm. Th that's the early. Uh-huh. That's the early. <laughs> the, early. the financially. The financially. Let's, that, let's, that really got yeah. To, um, saving. Mm. Saving was, yeah, a lot. It mm. was very crucial. Um, and obviously, uh, planning around your finances and mm. just knowing where you stand financially. I think <laughs> one thing that intimidates a mm. lot of us young people mm. is the issue of your credit score, your credit 100%. Rate. Oh, my goodness. 100%. Oh, my goodness. Listen, Ooh. sensitive topic. Ooh. How did you, yeah, how did you uh, go about that to even, like, push your credit score so that you could qualify for, uh -huh. for the home loan, etc. cetera. Oh. Uh -huh. So, I mean, luckily, it's been something that's been at the back of my mind for a while. Yeah. So then you would know that having a good credit score, good credit record is perfect. It's mm. exactly what you need. Mm. So it's something that I have been preparing for, mm. let's say like two years before I even went into okay. officially purchasing my, my yeah. property. So it's obviously, and mm. a lot of us struggle with this, especially young people, mm -hmm. just Credit is not always bad. Right. <laughs> it's not bad. It's probably how you manage it. Yeah. That that is the yeah. That's kind of where it becomes bad. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But cr credit in and of itself is not bad. Exactly. So um, I had to get over that because for the longest time, especially when I started working, it was just like don't get credit, mm -hmm. don't 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 get anything, just clean, clean, clean. Yeah. And in my mind, I thought you know I'm sorted. Mm. That's going to be enough. Mm. But get something. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's a credit card, mm. but manage it. Don't go overboard. That's the thing, <laughs> though. Yes, because at the end of the day, um, when you go to those lending institutions, they mm. need to know that, you know, you're credible. Yeah. <laughs> you're and credible. I think we're not taught enough how to no. manage credit. No. You know, no. yes, it's all f fun and well. You go to the yeah. bank, you get a credit card, and I'm, I'm only, you tell yourself, I'm only getting this thing to boost my credit record because in the next year or so, I want to apply for a home yes. loan. Yes, focus. Focus is so and determine and discipline. Discipline. That's exactly it. <laughs> How did you do it? Discipline. Mm. Discipline. And another question, my follow-up question is: Do you think it's easy to save in your twenties? It's not. It's not. I mean, um, I'll use myself as an example. Please. I don't have children as yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm <Please>. okay. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have children mm. as yet. I'm not married, so the only person I get to think about financially is just me. Right. But even then, as a young person, is still establishing themselves. Mm. Like you need to get certain things. You need to, yeah, build mm. your own profile, get certain things in order. I mean, you do need the money. Yes. You do need the money. Yeah. But you do have the added advantage. I mean, if you find my, yourself in, in my situation mm. of not having, like, um, expenses that you can't necessarily walk away from. Right. Um, so I, I guess the difficulty comes in that sense that you're, you're trying to establish yourself. Mm. But it's all about balance. Mm. Um, so it's establishing yourself in here and now, but also having uh, a forward-looking right. perspective. Right. So I'm getting this now. I'm sorting this out now. But... Um, Mm. What am I putting away for, for the, the future? future. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's always a tricky balance. Mm. I mean, and we always want to turn up mm. and have a good time and mm. spend money. We do. We want to yes, go to these do. places. Yes, we do. But then again, balance. Yeah. And just always being focused right. and, and having the end goal in mind. Right. It, it, it helps. It helps a great deal. Because, you know, we, we, we sit with this whole thing, credit, and you talk a lot about balance. Mm. And I wanted to find out from you, lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. what you actually did to balance yeah. during your 20s to make this... To make this home, uh, you know, this dream uh -huh. a reality. Uber Eats used to know my name. 
if I hadn't ordered in a week, they would call and ask. Are you still there? Are you still? Are you still? What's going yeah, on? Yeah. So it's it's, it's mm. just those small changes that you make. Yeah. Um, probably not going out as often as you used to. Right. If you have a midweek uh, outing with friends, I mean, right. cut it off for now. Thanks, um, Paul. I was going to go for dinner tonight, but I'm not doing <laughs> no, that anymore. No, don't, don't. <laughs> if you have an end goal in mind, you know it's just, I mean? you know, those small sacrifices you make yeah. in between, but yeah. it, it, it's, it's worth it. Right. Mind. Now that this is here, I mean, I, I get to do my, my, my midweeks now. I didn't back then, but now I can. <laughs> so it pays off, I guess. <laughs> it pays so off. I, exactly and i think what's so important is that um you i like that you say because a lot of the guests come on and they're like stop with this whole delivery thing change your lifestyle stop going out as much and we're in the we're at this age mm. where again it's that thing discipline yeah because it's it's about also saying no and keeping your end goal in mind yeah right yeah which is very important and just before the show you and i chatted and it was more about a lot of people coming to you asking you for advice mm -hmm. so i know that the, you know like demographically we are kind of booming especially in our our age group yeah. buying property a lot of people in their 20s are now taking that leap of faith and actually going for it right mm -hmm. and you making these lifestyle changes again like i said discipline is very important but what would you what advice would you give to people who currently are not in a position where they can mm -hmm. where they where they where, where they they cannot save anything yeah you know um they live from literally paycheck to paycheck but they also want this i mean pace yourself it's very important to pace yourself um i think one thing that that really gets to us especially as young people is you would see the people around you doing this doing that achieving that but pressure pressure, mm. pressure not only from the external but from yourself mm. But pace yourself um, and don't be too hard on yourself. Right. I mean, if it's not possible right now, it's not possible. Mm. But as much as you can, just, just try to find those little areas where I'm sure there's something. Right. <laughs> you probably <laughs> won't be able to save um, at the, at the rates that mm. you, you want to. Mm. But trust me, there's, there's just always something you can cut back on. Um, something you can adjust mm. um, where you can but but pace yourself and mm. be patient with yourself um, I mean we have to achieve these goals but we also have to be very realistic about our situations right. um, yeah I and think social media is yeah. not helping eh? it's not <laughs> it's not Delete that account Start it's there. not it's really not helping. let's talk about Instagram it is not <laughs> let's not talk about Instagram <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because and it's, al it's always comparing you're comparing yourself yes, to a lot yes. of people around you in your circles mm. And I love that you said, you know, just pace yourself. And it, mm. it can be very difficult at times. Mm. But, you know, when you get to the point in life, or even, and one of the biggest things we talk about on the show is not just investing in an asset or property, but investing in oneself. Of course. And mm. once you can figure that out, it's mm -hmm. going to be so much easier for one to uh, teach yourself these life lessons of mm -hmm. pacing yourself, yeah. of coming to terms with the reality of what, mm -hmm. you know, your financial budget is right now. And yeah. maybe you cannot achieve it right now. Mm which is very important. Uh, the a common saying is renting is literally like paying your landlord's bond. So what is your kind of uh, sentiment around that? Because I'm sure before maybe, oh, you did say that, you know, you had the option of going back to your mom and grand for advice. Yeah. But before that, while you're renting, that decision to buy is very difficult. Mm, so it is. How, kind of like what advice would you give people if they're sitting in that kind of middle situation, in limbo? Do I rent? Do I buy? What do I do? You know, that phrase, almost feels like the 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 nine to five versus entrepreneurship right. uh, yeah where it's like <laughs> if you're working for someone yeah you're helping them finance their dreams yeah, become the entrepreneur of the year yeah, yeah i mean but then again value it, right. it comes back to our understanding of value mm. um there are pros and cons to buying there are pros and cons to renting mm. um and it all depends on your situation right. it depends on what you want for yourself it depends on what you can have mm. right at the present moment we glorify home ownership and it's great that we do right. it's a huge step and anyone who's able to achieve that kudos to you yeah um but it's a huge financial commitment mm. it's a huge financial commitment and at times probably at that moment um you may not be able to attain that goal just because it's so difficult right right yeah right. so there are pros and cons to everything and renting affords you um i guess a sense of flexibility mm. um you are not as bound as you would be under you know a bond exactly yeah so i mean there are pros and cons to everything but i think um 
evaluate your situation mm. financially financially definitely yeah is it is it feasible is it a feasible option yeah and i mean at the end of the day there's absolutely there's nothing wrong with mm. renting it yeah does, it, it depends on you it depends mm. on your needs it depends yeah. on your situation um i mean personally since i'm here i, I prefer buying <laughs> <laughs> for me, drop those bombs. <laughs> for me, you prefer for me. buying, and yeah. I think for a lot of us, um, it's 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 like a legacy issue. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, it's mm. it's, it's kind of ego filled. It's a, it's a legacy issue. <laughs> something I can have, something exactly. I can point to, something that is mine. Mm. Um, for some people, that's not a major feat. It's exactly. you know, whatever. Mm. Um, but if if that's something you want, you want to have something tangible, something that you can call your own. If you can <laughs> handle the financial commitments, right. then definitely go for yeah. go for buying. It also goes back to the whole thing that you were saying that people need to pace themselves. Of course. So that's I I totally agree. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with renting no. um, but uh, again what are your goals in the mm. future you know what is it that you want mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. so important just earlier we spoke a lot about the, you know the other hidden costs and even just before we started you spoke about these surprises that come mm -hmm. out of nowhere and like you said sitting in the attorney's office not expecting all these hidden mm -hmm. costs these these just these surprises, you know. Yeah. So just before I find out, maybe as a first time home buyer, if you can elaborate on some of the hidden costs, because I know you had advice. Mm -hmm. You had that, you know, guidance and help from the elders, you know, who are yeah, there yeah. to guide you. What are some other hidden costs that you didn't know about? Um, okay, there were some that hit me by surprise. I think a lot of them I was aware of, and mm. perhaps I could name some of them. Mm, please. Um, I know we think of property as just the property itself and then we stop at that price i know when we're browsing private property mm. we look at the price of the property and we're like oh, okay cool i can manage that yeah boy oh boy oh boy okay <laughs> depending on uh which direction you take mm. uh personally i don't have um, a freestanding house okay so i'm in a gated community yeah. um you then have yeah. the costs that come with that maintaining the space mm. um who we know about your bond registration costs, we know about your uh, bond transfer costs, yeah. uh, but a cost that hit me by surprise Tell us. was the part where I have to connect to the electricity net. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that, that, that was, <laughs> I was like, what girl? And my mom was like, no, I thought you knew about that. I'm like, mm mm. Oh, wow. I mean, it was a relatively small right. cost, but it was just like, oh, okay, hectic. That's on me. Hectic, that's, yeah. that's what, what? Yeah. And then obviously the issue of insurance as well, you do not want to skip that scale. Yeah. But yeah. More often than not, I mean, I'm sure your lender will make sure that you don't skip that scale, that step, sorry. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it's 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 way more than just the property itself mm. it's also who i think this hidden step actually hit me a couple of months ago uh -huh. actually uh -huh. um i'm sitting in my place i'm like okay let me cook something <laughs> i put on my stove and it snaps in no that way. moment any everything becomes real i'm like i don't have <laughs> yeah. i don't have anyone to call right now so i'm yeah. hey the stove is broken can you come in it's yeah. like i'm i'm the landlord you are the one I'm yeah. the landlord. So, uh, <laughs> apart from the co costs associated with actually purchasing the property, right. you also have to think about maintaining mm -hmm. the actual property. And um, long term. And yes, yeah. definitely. So, even in my saving, I also had to factor um, those those issues in. Right. Um, so, you save for your deposits, for your registration, your transfer costs. Mm. But then you also have to think about, okay, if something had to happen with the plumbing, right. do I have reserves? Exactly. If something had to happen with the circuit, mm -hmm. do I have something? If mm. something breaks, if a door decides to fall off, do I have yeah, something, do I, or do I sit without a door for a few months? No, hey, you know, you need to. And were you prepared for that? I was. Luckily, okay. I was. Um, I made sure in my saving, I took about a year to okay. actually save before purchasing, oh, yeah, the property. Mm. Um, and I think a piece of advice that my father actually gave me mm. was. Um, think about or try as much as you can to estimate to what you would pay per month if okay. you were going to purchase a certain property within this price range. Right. Because you have all these online calculators that yeah, can yeah, actually yeah. do that for yeah. you. Um, yeah, and then add all these extra costs and whatnot. Exactly. Obviously, it won't be the exact amount, but it gives you an idea. Exactly. And then from your existing um, whatever source of income, mm. whatever, if it's more than just one, great for you, but yeah. whatever source of income, um, try to put that amount away. 
Right. So it trains you to actually, okay, this is how much, this is how it's going like, to feel, yes. this is how my life is going to change. Yeah. But at the same time, you're putting away money to actually finance the move. Oh. Mm. Um, so that helped, mm. that helped. Um, and by the time uh, the first payment went off, it wasn't a huge shock. It was just right. like, oh, okay, cool. Right. I'm comfortable. But if you're renting, if you look at it this way, if you're mm -hmm. renting and you're paying that amount, yeah. let's say, Still, you, it's almost that mentality of, oh no, I can handle this. Yeah. I can maintain a, no? I mean, um, um, yeah, in hmm. some instances, not always. Yeah, sure. The price that you would pay for renting versus the price they would pay for When owning. you're buying something, of course. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. That was the case for me. Mm. Um, the price that I was paying while I was renting mm is way lower than the price that I pay now. Right. Yeah, mm. so it, it, it's probably not the best indicator. No. Sometimes, it's yes. It's just when you're scared to buy, Paul. Oh, so you're just like staring. No. <laughs> I mean, if yeah. it works for you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if you have a goal in mind, I yeah. mean, train yourself. Move and yourself. Yeah. Mm. And I think what's so important is, because a lot of, I've been hearing this chat quite often, especially this week, is that saving without a purpose. Mm. I've been talking about that quite often. And mm. I have, you know, someone who, in my circle who's just saving, but no idea why. And mm. for me, I, I just, this is my own personal opinion. If you don't know why, then I, I don't see the need of saving. I've done that no before. Oh, yeah. I've done that before. And then I ended up finishing that money because <laughs> I was saving <laughs> without a goal in mind. Yeah. So I needed something, uh, an immediate expense. And I was just like, well, there's this money sitting around I don't know for what's nothing. For. Yeah. yeah. So mm, mm. I, I definitely agree with you. <laughs> saving with <laughs> saving with a goal in mind is always 100% effective. Perfect, it helps yeah. you. Yeah. Mm. It helps you stay disciplined. It helps you focus yourself mm. um, and just make sure that okay you, you don't do what you're not supposed exactly. to exactly i think in general purpose very that word important. purpose is very important. important and having one very is important. important you spoke about having um you spoke about living in a gated community and mm -hmm. another one of the questions that you often you also get asked in your own circle is freestanding yeah a freestanding home or actually investing in developments or even like you say a gated kind of complex mm -hmm. what is your opinion on that um you, yeah a lot of people tend to favor the freestanding. Yeah. yeah, because then again, my thing in my space, full Could control. Be my first option as well. Yeah, yeah. full control. Yeah. Definitely, it's a great option. Mm. Uh, but then pros and cons to everything. Of course. I think the one thing that I appreciate about a gator community, especially, I mean, I mentioned this, I'm not married. I don't have kids. Mm. So <laughs> just feeling relaxed in the sense that, okay, security so is taken yeah. care of, you mm. know. Um, the chances of anyone coming in without mm. being authorized, slim to none. Yeah. I mean, we've mm. never had any incidents. Um, and I made sure to check on that before I actually purchased the property. Like, okay, what's, what's, the, what's the crime like here? Mm. Um, you know, mm. how many instances in the past couple of months? Right. Um, and especially as a... As a young women in South Africa specifically, that's something <laughs> that's something you want to be sure of, yeah. your safety. Yeah. Um, again, it goes back to you, your situation, mm. your preferences. Mm. Personally, Gator community for me right now makes a lot of sense. Right. Because I don't have to be sitting at home thinking about, oh my gosh, did I lock the gate? Mm. Uh, did I activate the, the alarm? Yeah. I just know that even if for that one day, God forbid, that's never happened to me right now, right. <laughs> that I forget to lock Usually the door. <laughs> <laughs> I forget to lock the door, the sliding door, whatever. Mm. I know. Yeah. It's okay, no. When I come back home, everything's going to be Fine. intact. Because, yeah. yeah, security. On, on that note, you said, you know, you did your checks, the crime yeah. rate, safety. What else would you say a first time home buyer needs to look out for? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, this is specifically if you are buying within uh, a development or a, 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 a gated community. Yeah. Um, get to know what the long-term plan is in terms of the development itself. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times we're tempted and, mm, oh, okay, I have an example, a friend. This actually happened to a friend. That's why I'm cringing. Let's, like, I'm like, Let's say it on camera. Yeah, but I'm not going to say their name. Sure. Okay, it's no, okay. tell us. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he buys into a development and a lot of people are like running away from it. That should have been the first red flag. Mm. Um, it's kind of old. 
um, but in his mind, he's like, okay, I mean, it's, it's, it's rational. Over time, they're going to, you know, freshen things up and what, 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 what. Um, he gets into um, the property, buys it, everything, seals the deal. Mm. And then at the first um, AGM, mm -hmm. um, he then discovers that there are no long-term plans to actually develop the property. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so I mean, what's the value in that? Right. Yeah, so from his story, I made sure that when my turn came, you. I'm like, guys, so are there like any long-term plans to like develop the property, um, you know, upscale, make things fresher, yeah. da, 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 da. And then when I knew, when that was confirmed, I mean, um, I also got a look at the previous minutes. Um, my agent was able to actually organize that for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then just get a sense of, you know, what, what am I investing into? You're Very right. important. That's crazy that all of that yeah. happened to you. Mm, mm. <laughs> but also, you know, besides that, you spoke about location. Yes. You chose a certain location. Also, again, it, like you, you said, it goes back to what you want, uh -huh. your needs. Um, but besides security, location, you know, long-term plans. Mm -hmm. I think also, what are your long-term plans mm -hmm. as a being? Like uh -huh. you're saying, you know, everything's fine now because you don't have kids, you don't, yeah. you're by yourself, but what are your maybe personal long plans? Because what if you do want kids in the next year? Of course. Then <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, in the gated community that I'm in right now, right. beautiful community, but it's great for like a single young person. Okay. I know for a fact that in the future, if life does get serious and I do have a husband and kids, I don't want to stay there. Um, so even in buying the property that I have right now, the idea has always been, okay, somewhere down the line, I'm going to end up being a landlord. Yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> a goal is to have a bigger property. Right. Um, and I've given myself um, about four years to nice. accomplish that. We're already preparing for it, putting things aside, looking, trying to estimate as much mm. as we can, how much the move would require. Right. Um, but yeah, and I guess that also informed my choice of... Yeah. Know, the property the location because if you're thinking about being a landlord in the near future or in mm -hmm. the long term mm -hmm. you want your property to be in a place that is you know prime location right uh, close to uh, schools yeah. and the mall <laughs> and this and that yeah. central you know mm. accessible perfect yeah. So that was very important for me personally when I was purchasing the property mm -hmm. and oh, praise be, <laughs> yeah. I got that, I yeah. got that. But um, definitely long term is to be a landlord mm. and to move into a bigger property. Paul, you talk about the importance of having insurance, yeah. right? And what would you say uh, if, if one doesn't yeah. have insurance, right? What would their downfall be in the long term especially? I know insurance is key. It you is. shouldn't ever get to the point where you don't have insurance. It is. But well, what could happen in, in a case like that? I mean, first of all, Esti, you're not Raven and you can't see into the future. <laughs> raven, <laughs> when last? <laughs> um, you, you never know. Yeah. Um, and you can't discount um, any uh, disasters or anything bad um, happening to your property, mm. especially if you find yourself in a freestanding situation. Right. Um, something unfortunate takes place, something unfortunate happens. Mm you want to be sure that I'm covered, yeah. I'm going to be good. Yeah. I know you want to cut costs, I know you want to cut corners, mm. but when you think about it in the long term, it's going to save you a lot. Because yeah. if you come against a situation that requires a lot of money from you, something unforeseen, You'd you're going to have to either way. need the insurance. Yeah. Exactly. So rather save yourself the trouble. And don't take that risk. No, don't. Yeah. don't. I read something uh, recently where they said everything is a negotiation. Mm. Everything. Right. So I just want to find out from you, how far can one go, especially when it comes to buying your, pro your first home, yeah. when it comes to negotiating? I am a fan of negotiating. It's I love here. Negotiating. <laughs> First, I grew up in Durban. Ah, we go shopping ah, in the that market. That is such a bad stereotype. <laughs> no! <laughs> we go shopping in the market, right. you know, Sundays. Mm. Um, this is how much I have. How yeah, much yeah, can you, yeah. you know? Yeah. I love, I love, I love, I love. Love I negotiating? Love, oh, I love a bargain. I need to take you with me. <laughs> I love a bargain. Yeah. I mean, it, it requires a bit of sweet talking, a yeah. bit of chalk. I think you could do. I think you'd be perfect. Should we practice? No, really. <laughs> no, you don't even need any practice. I feel like you've got it at this point. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. yeah. So, um, fun fact, uh -huh. I was able to shave off. Uh, so yeah, from the... Pat. Yes. Yes. That is insane. Yes. Um, so, mm -hmm. it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that it is, but it's possible. Right. 
But I think what's so, I think the fear comes with negotiating is because uh -huh. of, no, negotiating at a market is very different yeah, to negotiating for your proper your home uh -huh. you know so I don't know I don't want to ask what the skills are that you need or what the tactics mm -hmm. are that you know because there's no I don't think there's a book for this like a manual no, no, no. but I think it's also just the confidence mm -hmm. uh, the ability and I think it's the knowing just the fact that you know now that yeah. you can negotiate especially when it comes to things like this is now that's when you start trying yeah yeah and I mean I, I can't advise for everyone's circumstance I can only advise from the point of what I've been through mm -hmm. and um, I was lucky enough to actually uh, find out that the person I was buying the property from has been trying or had been rather trying to um, get rid of the property for a while because okay. she could she she I think at that point she had already moved overseas oh, okay so she just wanted to close the chapter just get it over and done with um, a week before I'd put down my offer to purchase someone mm. had put down their offer and the bank said mm, no um, so I think she was at a point where she was just like okay I, I'm about I'm ready I'm right ready. so from that point I yeah. hate I hate that I did this and I hate that I just <laughs> yeah. outlined this outlined the situation like yeah. that but I mean um, do what you must mm. try doesn't mm. hurt to try mm. um, but yeah uh, you, earlier you said it took quite a while. Mm -hmm. You didn't know it would take this long. How mm -hmm. long did it take? Um, I mean, lockdown definitely made things difficult. Yeah. Because I got my property last year. Mm -hmm. um, it took a total of about four months. Okay. Four months. Okay. In my mind, I don't know why, in my mind, um, I was reading these uh, online guides and they'd be yeah. like, yo, I'm like 60, 60, um, eight weeks. Everything should be, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you have these um, unanticipated delays here and right. there. Um, yeah. And mm. then it took as long as it did, but I mean, it was worth it. Was it's the definitely way? worth yes. the wait. We spoke about um, negotiating, especially with financial institutions or negotiating with the current landlord, but which, whichever case. I feel like negotiation within property is quite broad. You yeah. know, you can do it at every different aspect, even with regards to the hidden costs. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, there, there's a way to navigate that negotiation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now, in terms of a loan and applying for a home loan or a personal mm -hmm. loan to buy a property, which one would you suggest? I mean, a home loan. Yeah makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I mean, more often than not with a, a personal loan, I don't think you're as flexible when it comes to the amount of time that you have to. Exactly. I mean, if you've got the money, mm. <laughs> if you've got the money, you know, yeah. then I mean, go for it. But um, yeah, it just makes sense to, 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 to mm. go for a home mm. loan. Um, it allows you the time to pace yourself. And um, in instances where you know you wanna uh, pay more um, right. within a certain month, then you have the flexibility mm. to do that. But it just it, it gives you enough time right. um, to 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 achieve what you need to achieve. A personal loan, I, I personally feel like it's a bit limiting. Right. Uh, maybe for a really small <laughs> purchase, a really small <laughs> property, then yeah. perhaps you could. Yeah. Um, but yeah, home loan, home loan is definitely the way to go. And this is actually. The, a frequently asked question on quite a few property platforms is can you reduce the mm -hmm. payment terms mm -hmm. have you tried have you wanted to I want to <laughs> okay <laughs> I want to yeah. um, I know there's quite a lot of ways you can go around it but the most popular is to pay more Yes. Yeah, to yes. increase your payment on yeah the amount of uh, money rather that you pay on your your monthly bond agreement. So that's something I definitely want to try. Um, I haven't quite as yet because I've been trying to furnish my place. Okay. So that's been taking <laughs> yeah. a lot of the weight uh, financially and then saving for the future, obviously. Yeah. But I definitely want to get that done. I mean, who doesn't want to shave some time? You know what I mean? Yeah. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that it's possible, hoorah! Take awesome. that opportunity mm -hmm. exactly. But also with regards to, you know, purchasing the property and yes, there were many surprises on the way mm -hmm. and hidden costs that you had no idea of. What other challenges came or obstacles even came in your way that you had to deal with and overcame? Ah, okay. Um, spiritually, <laughs> it was a bit much. Yeah. Um, I think even deciding to go into the property buying journey for me. I mean, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. so it is a very spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. um, praying for it before, praying for it during, during, and there's delays, and there are moments where you feel like, oh no, it's not gonna happen, mm -hmm. you know. Um, 
I think that was the biggest challenge for me. Okay. Um, and obviously the financial side of things, um, where you have to adjust a few things here and there, mm. um, where you have these surprise costs springing up and you didn't necessarily budget for that, right. but okay, I'm gonna take it out anyway because yeah. I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Another month of no Uber Eats. Oh, oh do it. damn, yeah. okay, I'm gonna have to cook now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, personally, those, those were some of the biggest challenges. Mm. I'm fortunate enough to have had a really solid support system mm. people who already to some extent knew what I needed right. uh, what the journey was going to require but I think from you know a personal level mm. where your mother and your grandmother can't be involved it's, it's a very emotional very of spiritual course. journey yeah um, yeah it's, it's yeah. Yeah, something else but you're still going through it and you're still obviously, yeah. you know, because it's the praying after as well yeah. that also comes with that spiritual mm. journey. And it's amazing because, I mean, you said you only bought the property last year and yeah. yet here you are. We need to do like a one year anniversary episode. This is actually my man. Oh, really? Ah. We should have been shooting this in, her, in your home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Mm. Um, congratulations again. Just to close off the show, I'd like for you to some advice to first time homebuyers who are scared but they are able to afford their first home, but they're too scared to do it. Do you want me to look at this? That's the one. <sighs> you have taken <laughs> this very long, difficult step, this difficult journey. Listen to me. Pace yourself. We've already said that. Mm -hmm. Pace yourself. Be honest about your circumstance, but be willing to adjust your lifestyle to, I guess, mm. shift yeah. around your current circumstance to reach your end goal in mind. And mm. listen, it's very important to prepare, 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 prepare. Yeah. Um, read, 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 research, research, research. Um, I think a lot of us sometimes don't know what the journey entails. Apart from the discussion that we had today, I know probably because of time, we were limited and we couldn't cover absolutely everything. But the information is actually there. Um, I know AC has a bunch of episodes here on this show that could answer a lot of your questions. But it's very important to Promote research. People. Yes, very important to research. <laughs> very important to prepare to know what you're going to be up against. And um, you can. You can. Mm. You can. It's possible. Thank you so much, Paul, for you know taking time out of your busy day and coming and talking to us about your you know home ownership journey. And again, congratulations. One year this month of being a homeowner well done congratulations and to everyone watching the show take that leap of faith buy that property let's stay together remember we're live every wednesday night at 8 p.m on instagram facebook and youtube take care